We have a short memory for bad news. In 2018, researchers used Google searches to see how long news events stayed in the American consciousness. They found that the news cycles for some of the biggest stories in 2018 only lasted for a median of seven days until the Google searches fizzled out. Most stories disappear from our consciousness within a day or two. Why? Who knows? Perhaps it's because there's always a more compelling story around the corner. Perhaps we can only handle small amounts of guilt and devastation that tough stories surface for us. Perhaps it's hard to sustain the difficult soul-searching and action items necessary to resolve the issues at hand. I'm keenly aware of this phenomena that I've begun to call bad news amnesia. Our appetite for bad news has waned. COVID-19? Well, of course I care about that, but let's move on with our lives. Let's get back to normal despite the fact that scientific warnings have told us this pandemic is far from over and cases in many states are on the rise. And this tragic story about George Floyd? America seems to have moved on from talking about race as well. I get it. I'm just as guilty. Marching and protesting and advocating for change is exhausting, especially when the effects of that change are intangible and hard to see. We have short memories for bad news. Our story of becoming a Jewish nation can also be seen as a series of short-lived news cycles that people easily forget. The Book of Shmot begins with these newsworthy stories, years of slavery, 10 plagues, the splitting of the Red Sea. And yet, when the going gets tough, the people want to return to Egypt. The cycle continues in Sefer Ben Midbar and is repeated in this week's Parsha with the story of the spies. Shlach lecha and Hashim v'yatura et Eretz Knan, send the men to scout out the land of Knan. And when the men return with the news and 10 of them paint a dire picture of the land of Israel, the people respond by asking to return back to Egypt once again, back to slavery. The people have bad news, amnesia. I want to focus on one word in the Pasha for scout scouting, the word v'yaturu, which implies that they wandered away from their duty, from what was important. In fact, the word comes back at the end of our Parsha in relation to Tzitzi. We're told, Do not wonder after your heart and eyes. Rashi, quoting the Tanchuma, makes the connection with the word Taturu used both in relation to Tzitzi and the spies. Don't wonder after the heart. Just like the wandering spies, the heart and the eyes are the spies of the body. They act as, a, as, as their agents for sinning, and they cause the body to commit sin. Rashi points out that when there is so much for our eyes to behold, so much darkness and unrest, we can't help but shut our eyes and wander away. Our hearts lead us in the wrong direction. And these wanderings, the issues that we are bombarded by, cause us to forget our center, to forget what's important. And so the Torah says to us, don't wonder, lo taturu. And if you look closely, the verse tells us to look at the tzitzi and not only don't forget, but also remember. Remember all the commandments of God and observe them. Now, not all of us walk around looking at tzitzi all day. But this Shabbat, I needed this message of tzitzi. Tzitzit are our daily news cycle. Sometimes our eyes wander. They lead us astray and we forget. But we have to keep looking, keep remembering and then keep doing. As the Gemara and Manachat explains, we must look at the tzitzit because seeing leads to remembering and remembering leads to doing. The new cycles will come and go, but we must not wander away. We must remember what matters and let our hearts lead us towards action. Good job.